The first step we're going to do is a quick review of the bulk density, porosity, and particle density lab. So bulk density is the total mass, or the oven dry mass over the total volume. That's 119 divided by 95. And that equals a bulk density of 1.25 grams per cubic centimeter. We cannot use the porosity equation 1 minus bulk density over porosity because we don't know what particle density is. If you aren't told to calculate particle density, then you can assume it's 2.65 grams per centimeter squared. But if you're not told to do that, you have to calculate it using the total pore or the volume of the pores divided by the total volume. And in this case, the volume of the pores is 180 grams which is the saturated water content minus the oven dry weight, which is 119 grams. Because all of that water is filling the pores between saturated and oven dry. And then divided by the total, which is 95. 0 0.64. The next thing we can do is calculate particle density, and we do that using the equation that we know. So 0 0.64 equals 1 minus 1.25 over particle density. Okay, so we do that, we get negative 0 0.36 equals negative 1.25 over particle density, particle density of 3.47 grams per cubic centimeter. Now this isn't actually a volume or a particle density you're going to find in soils, it is the result of me making up numbers. There are two main types of water content that you have to keep in mind. There's gravimetric moisture, and volumetric moisture. And if you see anything that has the word grams in it, you're calculating gravimetric moisture content. If you see anything that has cubic centimeters, then it is volumetric water content. And understanding the conversion between both of them is really, really important. The first thing you want to do when looking at soil water availability is to determine your overall gravimetric water contents. Gravimetric water contents are wet minus dry divided by dry. So our gravimetric water content, saturation first, so that's 180 minus 119, because that's the dry weight, divided by 119. 0.51. The next step you want to look at is the gravimetric water content at field capacity. So field capacity. It's 162 minus 119 divided by 119. And then lastly, we want to look at wilting point. We can assume an oven dryer and moisture content is going to be to be zero. So 125 minus 119 divided by 119. Field capacity is 0 0.36, so 36% water. And wilting point is 0.05% water. So those are our gravimetric water contents. The next step in the process is calculating the volumetric water content. Getting volumetric water content once you have gravimetric water content is a piece of cake. It just happens to be gravitational water content times bulk density. So at saturation, we have 0 0.51 times 1.25, realize that I 
deleted that from this side. At field capacity, we have 0 0.36 times 1.25. And at wilting point, we have 0 0.05 times 1.25. This leads us, leaves us with a value of 0 0.64. And notice this is the same as porosity, which means we did our calculations, right? 0 0.45. And wilting point, wilting point is 0 0.06. Unless you're working with a volcanic soil, your volumetric water content will always, always, always be greater than your gravimetric water content. The final step in calculating our soil water availability comes from calculating the respected water contents. You can either do this gravimetrically or volumetrically, and sometimes we ask for both. But in this case, I'm going to focus on volumetric water contents because that's what's most commonly used in the discipline. First, we want to calculate the gravitational water, which is water associated with macropores. And in this case, that happens to be saturation minus field capacity. These are the big pores. They drain really, really quick. 0 0.64 minus a field capacity content. 0.45. This leaves us with a gravitational water content of 0 0.19. The next step you can do is calculate the plant available water. This is, of course, the most critically important ones for plants. And these are associated with the mesopores. In this case, it is 0.4. 5 minus 0 0.06 equals so 39 0 0.39 is available for plant available water and finally you calculate the hygroscopic water which is the micropores lucky for us in this case it is wilting point minus oven drive which is 0 so the hydroscopic water is 0 0.06. To calculate the percent pores, you take this number, this number, and this number, and divide by the total amount of pores, which is 0 0.64. So in this case, 30% of the pores in this soil are gravitational pores, 61% of these pores are plant available, and the remaining 10% of this soil's pores are hydroscopic pores. In conclusion, we can see how different volumetric and gravimetric water contents are calculated and how we can associate those back to the different types of pores that our soil has.